Hi there, this is Akrich. In previous video, we discussed calling convention for 64 bit and 32 bit program. So, in this video, let's discuss how to put the shell code into stack and how to execute those shell code. So, let's get started. So for this exercise, this is the vulnerable code we are going to use. Uh, if you look at the foo function, uh, there is a vulnerability. Uh, it uses a getS function. Uh, we know that, right? GetS function does not check the length of the input. So in previous video exercise, uh, there was a function called hackrich, which will execute the system function and give us the bin SSL, right? So in this exercise, there is no such a function which will execute the uh, bin, bin SSL, right? So how can we exploit this vulnerability? Uh, one way is we can put the shell code into stack and we can execute the shell code and get the shell. In the sense, we can redirect the return address to that address where exactly shell code located and we can execute the shell code and we can get the shell. So let's discuss that in theoretically first and then let's move on to uh, hands on. So this is the resultant stack frame for a foo function, right? So we will do the same thing as we did it in a previous video. First, we will find out what is the length of the padding. Then we used to override this return address by some useful address, right? In previous video, we overrode this return address by hackage function address. So in this exercise, we will override this return address by shell code address. So then we will put some no slide uh, before putting the shell code. So what exactly no slide is, uh, it is represented by slash x90. So it does nothing. It is no instruction. It will just fly to next instruction. So why do we need this no slide? So this will make easy to find out what exactly shell code address. So we will put some no slide here. Then we will put shell code. So how can we find out what is the address of shell code? Because here we use the no slide, we no need to find out exact location of shell code. So we can point this return address to somewhere here or here because it executes the no slide, right? No slide does nothing. It will move to next instruction or it will slide to next instruction. So eventually it will execute the shell code. So how can we find out this no slide address? So if we find out the address of EBP when two function stack frame is allocated, then we can add some x byte to this ebp address to get the no slide address, right? So we can find out the ebp address using gdp. Let's find out that. I will load the executable file to gdp. So here we want to find out the ebp address after allocating stack frame for foo function, right? So that means after the execution of function prolog. So we discussed this, what is function prolog and function epilog in previous video. Okay, so that means we want to pause the execution after allocating the stack frame for foo function. In GDB, we can pause the execution by assigning the breakpoint. So whenever compiler hit that breakpoint, it will pause the execution. Then we can examine the stack and register. So we can assign the breakpoint in GDB using break. And here we want to assign the breakpoint after allocating the stack frame for foo function. We can just say foo. So you can see that there is a one breakpoint at this address. So now I will run the program. So whenever it hit the breakpoint, it will pause the execution. Now I can print out the address of EBP just using p dollar EBP. So this is the address of EBP after allocating the stack frame for foo function. So this is the address of EBP after allocating the stack frame for foo function. And I already find out the length of the padding. So if you don't know how to find out that, just watch the video appearing in the i card. So let's use the pound tool. Let's import the pound tool. So let's create the process. And name of the executable file then print whatever content received by this executable file 
no first padding padding is 52 byte long then return address right return address so return address is uh, here this is 32 bit p32 and address of the evp plus some x byte i will put some 120 byte because we are going to use around 240 no slide slash x 90 240 then shell code so we can use a built-in function in font tool uh, there is a built-in function uh, asm shell code sorry shell craft dot sh or you can use this shell code i found this shell code in uh, one of the website i will provide the link in the description you can use this too. so i will use this uh, built-in function so then we want to send this payload right send line padding then return address then nope slide then shell code then we we will receive clean. so it will print out what are the uh, content received by the process after sending the payload then we use interactive function to get the interactive field. so let's run this uh, python code so before starting the exercise disable the aslr protection aslr is one of the protection against the stack buffer overflow uh, i will discuss this in detail in next video uh, you can use this command to disable the aslr protection okay now let's run the python code exploit so if i say ls it didn't work but if i use 125 byte it worked but until my knowledge uh, previous exploits also should work uh, i invested around three to four days uh, to figure out what exactly the issue but i could not figure it figure out that uh, uh, if you find out what is the issue please comment below uh, i tried another method uh, here we are going to use a pound tool only to build the payload but we are going to write that payload to some temporary file then we will give the input to executable file using that temporary file so let's try that method here we don't want to create any process i will remove this line too and we don't want to send anything we will assign this to payload this two line also not required so i will write this payload to some temporary file with open uh, let's say file name is payload uh, uh, f dot write payload save that I will exit from this session clear this out and python exploit.py uh, to create one file called payload so this is the input so let's pass this input to executable file cat payload 32 we didn't got the shell uh, in order to get the interactive shell we need to use this command say cat yeah now we got the interactive shell so if i say id yeah so let's change our payload to uh, 120 byte 
let's run this file again sorry 125 let's run this file again Python export department. Yeah, it worked too. So that's why we need to use a different method if uh, one method didn't work. So whatever the payload we used here worked because this 132 executable file does not have the non-executable stack protection. So there is something called non-executable stack protection. What it does it, it will make the stack as non-executable. So whatever the payload we pushed into stack will be treated as a data. It will not be treated as an instruction. So our shell code also be treated as a uh, data. So any attempt to execute it, execute it as an instruction will crash the program. I have another executable file uh, which has that protection. So let's try this payload on that executable file uh this is so you can see that this payload didn't work on that executable part because it has that protection so how can we check that whether a particular executable file has some protection or not so i will discuss this in uh next video but i will give a brief overview how can we check that uh, let's clear this out So we can use checksec tool or, or we can use pound tool too to find out uh, what are the protection is enabled for a particular executable file. So here I will use check checksec. So if you look at here, this is the non-executable stack protection. It is disabled for 132. So if you look at this file so this protection is enabled so this way you can check what are the protection uh, enabled for a particular binary file so i will discuss other protection in next video so until then stay tuned like the video and subscribe the channel